so the, the one thing that kind of came through in, in this was, man, it's, it's a big production now. Uh, there's cameras everywhere. They're, they're watching you. And when they do the ping pong balls, uh, you know your 68 numbers out of 100, no, out of 1,001. We know ours. We get a piece of paper, and it, it states it. And they start from the very first pick, and they work their way down. And I don't know if this is going to make anybody feel better, but we hit the first three out of four numbers. So we we had a chance. Uh, I mean, I, my heart was racing. Uh I was pretty excited, but we didn't get the last number, and that went to San Antonio. And overall, we, we stayed at seven, but some good news is because San Antonio was above Houston, we get the 32nd pick. Uh, if we didn't get that 32nd pick, it would have went to 50. So that's a big delta for us, and we really like that 32nd pick. So now we have the seventh pick, the 26th pick, the 29th pick, the 32nd pick, and the 50th pick. Uh Probably that's a lot of youth for one team to add. So I, I don't, I don't think we'll probably keep all those. Could we be packaging and moving around? Absolutely. Could we be moving some of those out into the future and keeping some, some dry powder? Absolutely, that's a possibility. Um, I think all things are on the board for us uh, as we look to improve this team. I think I've talked about it a little bit in the past. You know, with, with cap space, with picks, we do still have a ton of opportunity. And, uh, you know, this week's really important for us because uh, we're meeting these players. We're doing a lot of interviews, getting to know some of the players. And for me, that's really, really important because, you know, what we're trying to do is we're trying to get another Ben, Ben Matherin. We're trying to get another Andrew. We're trying to trying to keep add to this young core and uh, keep growing the team. So. With that, I guess I'll, I'll turn it over and you can ask some questions. Or not. Any questions, anybody? Anybody have questions at all? If not, we're all good. No, 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 no. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, can now. This is Greg Doyle. I don't know if the raise hand function's not working. Maybe all 34 of us are idiots, but uh, I guarantee you we have questions, so don't hang up on us. Kevin. Okay. Um, all right, yep. Greg, because you asked nicely, Greg, we'll, we'll stay on the line. <laughs> hey, thank you. Thank you. Um, Kevin, how – nobody had a great chance at this pick. You know, the, the, the number one – the best chance was 14%. You guys are about half that, so nobody yep. had a great chance. How, how disappointed are you to not get – this is not a normal draft. How disappointed are you? I'm trying to tell you how to answer it, but please tell me, are you disappointed to miss out on Victor? Well, I can't specifically talk about one player. What I can tell you is I think the kid, uh, the, the, the potential first-round pick is whoever that may be is transcendental. I think he's a player that – I think this year's draft is one of the most unique drafts I've ever seen in my 30 plus years in the, in the, in the league and San Antonio with the first pick that, that changes their organization in a big way. Um, I've said this, I believe this, that the, the player may never play in a game that's not sold out. He's that good. And that, that, that right looks to the credibility of magic and, you know, Larry and Michael, those guys never played in games that weren't sold out. This kid will never play in a game that's not sold out, in my opinion. That's how good he is. If I can ask one more, I see Bob's hands up, but if, I'm, if I still got the mic, why is this draft so unique? Um, I mean, it's unique at the very top. It doesn't seem to be terribly deep with great players. Am I wrong about that? You know, there have been there have been drafts where I thought, well, just overall it's it's an okay draft, and it ended up producing a lot more players. If you look at the analytics, it says there are seven really good picks in every draft. Now that's a very general statement. Um, you know, picking seven, I think we're going to get a good player. I think at worst we're getting a rotational guy. 
at best we're getting a starter, but it's not the number one pick either. I mean, I'm not trying to fool you into saying it's even close to that. I do think there's a little bit of a tier underneath that uh, for a couple players. And then I think we're in the third tier where there's about 10 or 12 players and there's going to be a lot of jockeying in that area, I believe. And because of some of the new rules coming, picks are becoming more valuable. Uh, the ability to have three uh, two ways makes even second round picks valuable. That 30 second pick will, will get us a lot of things. You know, what we're going to be deciding is, you know, do we want to keep our powder dry for future acquisitions or do, do we package and look at all kinds of things? I mean, I can't even tell you with all these picks what our, what our options are yet. What happens before tonight is we have conversations with a lot of other presidents and GMs all the time, but they're not substantial. Uh, after tonight, they become sustan- substantial. And they'll be, they'll be maneuvering and trying to get to where a player that you want. But I like seven. Um, not opposed to keeping seven. I think, you know, there's always a guy that kind of falls out of the top two or three that sometimes you like, wow, we had him, you know, second or third on the board. I, I don't know if that happens uh, for sure, but it may. Bob, go ahead. Yeah, Kevin, you mentioned, um, you know, you're, you, you have a lot of options going into the next couple of months. Uh, with, do you see an opportunity to move up? Uh, will teams be willing to to make deals in this kind of draft uh, with this with this sort of uh, uh, talent? Uh, I, I think in specifically about Portland because they don't they don't want to wait much longer with with Damian. Uh, they want to get something. They want to you know be good right away. It's a very roundabout way of asking. Are, are you thinking? There are move up possibilities. I think you probably hit the right team if there was going to be. I mean, I think that that team right now. I mean, could they go young? You know, um, is there move up possibilities? There's always move up possibilities outside of the first pick. There's no nothing, no chance. No one is going to get that San Antonio pick. Zero. Not any team in the league can get that. After that, it's a little harder for a couple picks. But it just it, it becomes how much pain are you willing to to endure and how much future talent are you willing to sort of explore. I, I think there's a chance. I think I think the tier we're in right now is a pretty good tier, to be honest with you. You you got Benedict with uh, the sixth pick last year. Can you get a guy uh, at his level at number seven in this particular draft? Well, that's the goal. (laughs) You know, getting him there and then Andrew in the early second round, you know, kind of moved our timeline up, it feels like, a little bit. Uh, I hope so, Bob. Ask me, you know, after we get through some workouts and getting to know these players. I mean, at the end of the day, we know we have to we have to improve on defense. We have to get a competitive spirit that's even stronger than what we had. We had a pretty good one this past year. But if you look at the teams that are playing deep into the playoffs, there's some really tough physical teams and tough mental teams. And so we're going to be kind of looking for that competitive spirit over the next month or so <clears throat> in our workouts and, and what we're, you know, trying to evaluate. I think that there's some kids that are going to bubble up. I think there's some, some players that may not be, you know, in our area sort of in the box right now that, that could, could, could bubble up a little higher. So um, I, I think for us is Tyrese gives us a real unique look at things and that, we have to build around that, around some of his skills. So you got to be able to shoot the ball. You got to be able to defend. And we just love these really high level competitive kids. That's what's really being successful in the playoffs. When you look at the Miamis, and it's, it's becoming less about true positions and more about 
can you throw four or five guys out there that really know how to play and 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 are, are super competitive and have a a good ability to play with one another? 